Once again I welcome you all to MSP lecture series on advanced transfer metal chemistry. Uh, this is uh, 18th lecture in the series and my previous lecture I had initiated discussion on ligand field theory. Let me continue from where I had stopped. As I mentioned in my previous lecture before I begin using uh, ligand field theory to explain bonding in bonding for coordination compounds, let me make you familiar with molecular orbital theory so that understanding of ligand field theory would be very easy. Here uh, f resolving molecular orbital description of a polyatomic molecule into a three component problem using a method known as ligand group orbital approach. For example, when we write molecular orbital diagram for simple diatomic molecules or heterodiatomic molecules, it is very easy. I am sure you are all familiar with uh, writing MO diagrams for molecules such as hydrogen, uh, N2, O2 or even CO. But however, when we want to write molecular orbital diagrams for polyatomic molecules, it is very appropriate to consider a set of orbitals called ligand group orbitals. For example, let us consider a triatomic molecule such as water oriented along z axis. So, here consider two oneness atomic orbitals of two hydrogen atoms and each oneness atomic orbital has two possible phases and when they are taken as a group there are two possible phase combinations are there and we essentially call them as ligand group orbitals whether we have two, three, four or many. So, we can you go for this ligand group orbital concept. Now, once again the number of atomic orbitals combined is equal to number of molecular orbitals produced. The energy of bonding molecular orbitals will be lower than that of isolated atoms. The energy of anti-bonding molecular orbitals will be higher than that of isolated atom and they are almost close to the one of the atomic orbitals which is higher in energy compared to the other one. In case if we are considering two atoms having different relative energies. The energy at the orientation of atomic orbital should be similar to form molecular orbitals. For example, if we take Px, it has to interact with Px only, Px cannot interact with Py orbital. Uh, representation of sigma and pi bonds is similar to what we use in valence bond theory. Sigma bonds we use Greek uh, you know symbols sigma and pi we are using pi whereas anti-bonding irrespective of either sigma or pi we put star uh, as a superscript at the end or on right side of that symbol. So, while filling molecular orbitals similar to atomic orbitals of Bo and Pauli's exclusion principles and Hund's rule should be followed and higher the bond order you should remember stronger is the bond and bond order is nothing but the number of electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals minus number of electrons in the anti-bonding molecular orbitals divided by 2. The bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals for core electrons cancel each other as a result there is no net contribution from core electrons towards the bond formation in a, a molecule. As a result what happens there is no net contribution comes for bonding and then can be ignored. Only molecular orbitals diagram shows MOs created by combining atomic orbitals of valence electrons are very very important. That means emphasis is given for orbitals, valence orbitals okay, and our valence electron orbitals. Now, let us draw MO diagram for simple molecules such as H2 and also for other important diatomic molecules for better understanding. So, now if you take you know two hydrogen atoms are coming with one s one electron each and they are energy similar. So, they are in the same line energy. So, when they combine together they generate two molecular orbitals one is bonding one is anti bonding and two electrons are occupying the bonding here and here it is empty. So, if you calculate the bond order 2 minus 0 by 2 equals 1. So, bond order is 1. So, thus we have a one bond between H and H. That means molecular orbital theory very nicely predict the, the multiplicity of the bond and also once you know the bond order you can tell whether the strong bond exists between them or weak bond exists between them and how molecule is stable. So, now let us consider couple of more uh, molecules. Let us try to uh, write a more diagram for uh, helium 
diatomic molecule. So, helium molecule having H E 2 molecule. So, now it is complete field 1 s orbital is there. So, 2 electrons are there here and 2 electrons are uh, 2 electrons are here in this one for H E 2. So, then if you try to form molecular orbitals we have sigma has 2 electrons, sigma star also 2 electrons. So, net bond order is 0. So, that means if the bond order is 0 then the molecule cannot exist. So, simply you can say HE2 cannot exist. How about HE2 plus? When you consider the HE2 plus, we are considering one HE with uh, two electrons, one HE which is positively charged cation with one electron. In this case what happens? Two electrons are occupying uh, the bonding orbital and one is occupying antibonding. So, net bond order is half. Yes, there is a possibility of existence of HE2 cationic species. So, this also again tell you whether a particular molecule can exist as a diatomic species or not. So, now uh, let us try to write uh, MO diagram for water molecule. Um, it is very interesting. So, this is how uh, do not worry much about Mulliken symbols if you have not understood does not matter. What is important is water molecule means oxygen, oxygen is coming with S2, P4, 6 electrons are coming and then H2 means as I said ligand group orbits if you consider H2. So, 2 hydrogens are there, we are getting 2 electrons. So, 2 electrons and 6 there are 8 electrons are there. If you place 8 electrons we, we are placing in this fashion 2 electrons here and 2 electrons here, 2 electrons here and 2 electrons here and these 2 electrons and these 2 electrons are responsible for making 2 OH bonds whereas these 2 pairs of electrons are essentially the lone pairs on oxygen. Let me show you from uh, uh, Lewis dot structure and also from valence bond theory. So, we write like this according to Lewis dot structure. What we do is, so we have 6 plus 2, 8 electrons are there here, 6 plus 2, 8 electrons are there. Out of 8 electrons what we are using? We are using here 2 electrons, here we are using 2 electrons for making bond and remaining 4 electrons I am putting here to complete the octet. And VACPR theory, we have 4 pairs of electrons are steric number according to VSCPR. We call it a steric pair. So, we have 4 pairs are there. Out of 4 pairs what happens? 2 are bonding and 2 are uh, lone pairs. Bonding pair and 2 are lone pairs. That means, we write something like this here. And then here we have 2 electrons. So, that means, we have 2 pairs of electrons are there and these 2 pairs of electrons can be seen from here is this this one. And then if you go for uh, hybridization concept valence bond theory, oxygen undergoes sp3 hybridization and when it goes sp3 hybridization, it has 2 uh, sp3 hybrid orbits with 1 electron each and 2 sp3 hybrid orbits with uh, 2 electrons each. So, and this will interact with hydrogen so that water molecule is formed here. Again these lone pairs are there, these lone pairs can be seen from this one here. So, the question is have you come across any example where water acts as a bidentate ligand? We know that water can bind readily as aqua and then which lone pair one of the lone pairs. So, this lone pair is responsible for making water as a ligand. And how about the second pair? Okay, it cannot see it is little deeply buried, it cannot give readily and when you make an attempt to give this one what happened the OH bond goes and it becomes hydroxo species. When it becomes hydroxo species it acts as a bridging ligand. And if you see in the literature or somewhere neutral water molecule is not acting as a bidentate ligand because second pair is not readily available although you can see the lone pair is there because it will lower in energy and it is not readily available for bonding. When we make an attempt using base or an acid in that case what happens we are cleaving one of the OH bond as the result becomes hydroxo species and then that can bridge to metal centers. So, that means this information does not come uh, from valence bond theory, but molecular orbital theory can explain this some of these important properties. Now, let us look into carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a very interesting molecule and uh, when I floated my 
course on main group elements, I did discuss about karma monoxide and lot of students write to me asking about the stability of CO molecules when you remove an electron and all those things. I must have told answer to lot of uh, students and still continue doing it. So, let me um, uh, you know clarify those doubts with the CO molecule. Of course, I will be discussing more such interesting aspects as this course progresses. Let me write a more diagram for uh, CO molecule here. If you just look into CO molecule carbon here and oxygen is here and oxygen as once again comes with 6 electrons and carbon comes with 4 electrons. We have a total of as electrons 10 out of 10 uh, basically what happens here uh, 2 electrons are there, here 2 electrons are there and here 2 electrons, 2 electrons and 2 electrons. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 are there. If, if 10 are there, how do you consider carbon monoxide bond order? That is a question. So, for that one let me write again Lewis dot structure here. For that one before Lewis dot structure I write let us count valence electrons. We have 4 plus 6, we, we have 10 electrons are there and uh, out of 10 electrons first I utilize a pair of electrons to make a, a bond and then 8 electrons are there. First I should satisfy the octet of the most electronegative atom in this case it is oxygen. So, I write here. Now, 8 electrons have been utilized, a pair of electrons are left, I put here on carbon. So, if you see these electrons here, so this pair of electrons are responsible for making carbon monoxide as a neutral sigma donor ligand. So, this is a sigma donor pair of electrons. Now, the octet of uh, carbon is not satisfied, it has only uh, 4 electrons are there. Then what happens? Carbon monoxide pleads with oxygen whether it can donate a pair of electron and place it in between so that both of can enjoy octet satisfaction. In that case oxygen agrees and it puts here and another pair it puts here as a result what happens we see a, a triple bond between carbon monoxide and oxygen. So, now the triple bond is there. So, these triple bonds are responsible for giving bond order of 3 here. So, these electrons are coming from this pair and this one and this one if you see that is because of this one. Now, okay, so this one it looks like uh, it remains non-bonding and uh, several books propose several type of molecular order diagram. Nevertheless, it is non-bonding but it is little lower in energy but still we are considering what happens. These 6 electrons are responsible for making the C triple bond, bond order 3 and for example, if you remove one electron to generate CO plus then what happens the energy of uh, this one further drops and comes lower, little lower. So, in that case what happens you have to consider that also as a bonded. In that case what happens your bond order will be uh, 7 minus 0 by 2, 7 electrons are there bond order 3, 5. So, that means CO plus bond order increases and this is how you can give a correct answer for CO plus versus stability of CO molecule. So, there should not be any doubts about that one. So, this is non-bonding and uh, this non-bonding is uh, this is the we are talking about. Uh, this is how one can understand CO and what would happen and of course, here next when it uh, acts as a you know pi acceptor metal electrons will be going to this one. When the metal electrons goes more and more electrons are going to pi star then what happens the bond order would start decreasing and eventually sometime what happens this uh, triple bond will almost become double bond. As a result we have multiple bond between metal to carbon. I will be discussing all those things uh, in detail and in fact you should remember the fact that a carbon monoxide can take anywhere between 0.2 to 1.2 electron density into its pi star. So, accordingly you can see the strengthening of metal to carbon bond to the same extent weakening of carbon to oxygen bond of carbon monoxide. So, yeah this another one I showed you. So, this is how the another carbon monoxide uh, MO is shown and also I have also come across this kind of things and here they are predicted as uh, anti-bonding. Yes, if it is anti-bonding then you have to consider these things are bonding. This also you should consider then 8 minus 2 it becomes 6 and after uh, removing one electron what happens it is uh, sigma bonding becomes lower then it becomes 7.5. This also holds good but this is not appropriate and because uh, for bonding purpose it should not be considered deeply buried the oxygen lone pair. That is the reason probably I believe it is not the right one and the right one is 
the one I wrote here. This is the, the most appropriate MO diagram for carbon monoxide. Let us look into another interesting molecule BF3 and uh, BF3 we have 3 electrons in the valence cell of boron and then we have 3 fluoride ions are coming or 3 fluorine atoms are coming with 7 electrons. That means uh, in order to construct this one I should consider 4 valence orbitals of boron that is 1s and 3p. Similarly, I have to consider 4 orbitals from each fluorine atom so that we should have 12 ligand group orbitals will be there. That is the reason to understand them I have given different color it does not mean anything. They are all now ligand group orbitals having the similar properties, but to distinguish I have just given different color so that you can counting would be very easy. So, 12 ligand group orbitals are there. That means now what we have is so 3 electrons are coming from boron and then 7 into 3 21 are coming from so total we have 24 electrons are there. So, this molecular orbital diagram should account for these 24 electrons. Let us see how it happens. So, you can see here the field ones 2 electrons here and then 4 electrons and 6 electrons. So, these 6 electrons represent 3 BF bond formation. These electrons here and this one would represent 3 BF bonds. So, that means we have utilized 6 electrons are there. And what is this one? What is this one here? Okay, this one is essentially coming from uh, one of the lone pairs of fluorine atom, one of the lone pairs of fluorine atom. Let me show you using Lewis dot structure here. So, boron is there and I make, uh, I write something like this and utilize 6 electrons for making 3 BF bonds. And then whatever the electrons left I should satisfy the octet I will start writing like this at the end you can count whether uh, uh, my writing is correct or not. So, now if you count totally we have 24 electrons are there. So, 24 electrons are there and then but boron has only 6 electrons it is electron deficient and also it is a Lewis acid. So, now the question comes if we have BF3 and we have BCL3, uh, F is a more electronegative atom. So, then when we compare the Lewis acidity uh, strictly speak according to periodic properties BF3 should be a stronger acid and BCL3 should be relatively weaker compared to BF3 it is also a stronger acid. But when you look into actual properties BCL3 is a stronger Lewis acid compared to BF3. Then how to explain that one? Here what happens? You are talking about 2p orbitals and 2s orbitals again also here 2p and 2s. So, orbitals are of same size as a result overlapping is same and since the energy of 2p is same and then basically what happens? A pair of electron from one of the fluorine atom will be donated here. So, that means now what happens? Octet is satisfied. That pair of electron is shown here. So, this happens whereas why it do not happen in case of BCL3, BCL3 we are considering 3p orbitals and the because of the orbital mismatch this overlapping of 3p electrons with 2p orbital is not effective as a result what happens still boron remains electron deficient as a consequence BCL3 is much more stronger Lewis acid compared to BF3. So, again this can give you very satisfactory answer about these trends or properties. So, that probably you may not be understand even from valence bond theory. Of course, if you use valence bond theory also you can write. If you use valence bond theory then we have to talk about uh, sp2 and then keep the p orbital empty that empty p orbital would take electron from one of the fluorine atom. So, this is how you can explain in case of polyatomic molecules also. Okay. Now, we have utilized the 8 electrons 2 for bad donation from fluorine to boron and remaining electrons will be so, 16 electrons are there. Those 16 electrons are 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That means these 16 electrons remain as non bonding here. They are non bonding electrons, 16 electrons is accounted. That means 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, all 24 electrons are accounted. So, this is how you can explain without any problem 
the bond formation and the existence of BF3 molecule and also you can also predict and tell about its Lewis acidic nature with respect to BCL3. This shows superiority of molecular orbital theory over other bonding concepts that we use. So, now let us look into another interesting molecule SF6. So, before we shall focus our attention on this MO diagram, I will show you this one with uh, valence bond theory. Of course, yes, uh, SF6 uh, when you look into it, uh, Lewis dot structure cannot explain because we have here 12 electrons are there, 12 electrons are there, it shows only about octet that means beyond 8 it does not believe. So, that means BF3 also you cannot explain where electron rich metals more than 8 electrons are there, where Lewis dot structure cannot tell. But partially to an extent Lewis structure is true that is proved by molecular orbital theory. If you look into valence bond theory what happens you can see clearly here we have 3s we have 2 electrons are there and 3p we have 4 electrons are there we have 3d orbitals are there which are empty yes I can utilize them very similar to outer orbital complex like sp3 d2 I can make 6 sp3 d2 orbitals and then put this fluorine coming with 12 pairs of electrons because once all the electrons are taken out they become F minus and each one will be giving 2 electrons that means 6 electrons will be coming to S. So, sp3 d2 will be completed. So, this is how valence bond theory predicts the geometry of SF6 as an octahedral and it is a sp3 d2 hybridized uh, system. Uh, but if you look into uh, this MO diagram here the energy of 3d is too high. I forgot to put here energy, energy is too high that means nowhere you can see the participation of EGR T2G with F orbitals. So, instead how it is explained you can see 6 fluorine atoms are coming with 12 electrons already we are here we are having here 6 electrons are there that 6 and 6 12 should be accounted and here if you see a pair of electron is there and then 6 pairs of 6 electrons are the 3 pair and then this 8 electrons we see here are fine and then we have another 2 pair of electrons are here that is coming from fluorine they do not find suitable orbitals from uh, sulfur and as a result they remain non-bonding. So, that means SF6 solely stabilized with only 4 pairs of electrons. Then what it is? Then it is a hypervalent molecule. Such molecules we call it as hypervalent molecules and uh, 6, 8 electrons are there that makes octet is satisfied according to Lewis acid and then 4 electrons are there and these 4 electrons means 2 fluorine bonds uh, essentially keep the electrons towards itself and make weak bonds can be placed then because of the very high energy of d orbit. So, they are not participating in bonding they are called hypervalent molecule. Similarly, if you consider sodium hexafluorosilicate Na2SiF6 that is also hypervalent molecule. Then how it is octahedral geometry? Yes, what happens? It is highly symmetric. What happens? The, this it is like almost dynamic process they keep changing. As a result what happens? It looks uh, very stable and, and the stability comes because of kinetic. Okay. So, for example, if the moisture or something try to attack there is no vacant site on sulphur as a result what happens it, it appears SF6 appears more stable compared to SF4 nevertheless when you heat it and get rid of 2 fluorine atoms it is vulnerable for hydrolysis. So, SF6 is a hypervalent molecule and they, it never employs 3D orbitals in this bonding scheme. So, uh, let, me, let me stop uh, at this stage and now with this information uh, on molecular orbital theory let me switch over to ligand field theory. Uh, of course, ligand field theory is more or less molecular orbital theory, but it has uh, uh, crystal field theory component also it has taken mixing of orbitals that valence bond theory is also taken. So, let me discuss more interesting chemistry based on ligand field theory in my next lecture.